welcome back to Crave TV. Today we're here in downtown Spokane at this staple, Dick's Hamburgers. We're gonna run inside, see what Adam's up to today. All right, so I'm thinking a milkshake sounds perfect right about now. Chocolate shake. Oh my goodness, would you look at that. Hey, how's it going? Good, what are you doing here? Just hanging out back here, making some food. Everybody likes Dick's Hamburgers. Hi, I'm Adam Hegstead, a chef and restaurateur in the, in the Northwest. I'm all about the people because that's what hospitality is built on. Hi, I'm Chandler Baird, local foodie and lifestyle influencer at Spokane Eats. I'm all about highlighting our local eateries and the communities that support them. Crave TV is a telling of stories through visiting the places and restaurants, meeting the people who make it happen, and talking to the chefs who help create this amazing industry. This is Crave TV. Hey, Jamie, how's it going? Good, how are you? Would you uh, show me around? Yeah, I would love to. So this is our fry area where okay. we cook all our chicken Hand cut strips. fries? Yeah, chicken strips, fish sandwiches, fish and chips, hand cut. How, much, how many uh, potatoes do you go through like a day? So on average, I would say about 700 pounds. Of That's potatoes. crazy. Yeah. Uh, all, all hand cut. Hand cut. Yeah, yeah that's wild. Uh, cooked in three stages. So we blanch them first, okay. and then we pre-cook them, and then we cook them. Nice. Uh, and usually, from one stage to the end is about a half hour. Okay. How busy we are. So you're continually, just always, yeah. like, trying yes. to keep up on fries. Yes. Okay. And the burgers, of and course. The burgers, of course. Uh, the grill holds 102 patties so we, when we're busy. We're continuously putting on 102 patties, getting them off in about 10-ish minutes, and wow, putting crazy. on another 102 patties. That's so wild. That's fast. It is wild. What are what are some other things you're famous for? Tartar sauce. We're oh huge. yes, of course, the tartar yes, sauce. Yes, our tartar sauce is huge. Okay. Uh, we make all our own tartar here. Uh, use about 15 gallons a day. <laughs> uh, about Spokane does love its tartar sauce. Of these little one ounce cups wow. a day, and about 250 of these little two ounce that's, cups that's a lot. per day. And how long I'll, have you been here? I've been here just shy of 30 years. Wow, <laughs> wow, congratulations. That's uh, fantastic. And how long has, has Dick's been here in the community? They've been here since 65. Wow, that's, so, so. that's a long time for a business to survive. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. thank you so much for thank having you. us. and. Yes. Uh, Amazing to be at this iconic space behind the grill. So, thank right. you again. All right. All right, so we are sitting here with the famous, what do they call it? Whammy. The whammy. The whammy. <laughs> the whammy and the fresh cut oh, yeah. fries right. and our shakes. I have black raspberry, right? right. And salted caramel right. for Adam. Tartar, you gotta, forget, gotta have tartar. tartar. Yes, and this is Linda. She is the owner here at Dick's. And how long have you been here? I was born and raised here. I started in 1967. Wow. Oh, okay. that's great. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that says something about how great your food is. People keep coming here yeah. year after year, generation after generation. Yes. So that's and it probably great. hasn't changed that much, right? Yeah. No. We've added a few items, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. I know my family's been coming here since I was a very little kid, so that's, yeah, that's really fantastic. I just had two customers come in um, Saturday, and they were from uh, Colorado, Denver, mm -hmm. I guess, and they hadn't been here for 25 years, and they told me just the minute they came off the driveway, they zipped right in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they were just really, really happy with their that's food. So so, yeah, that's so yeah. great. That's so great. And your favorite thing is the french fries. Right. They're right. fresh cut. Oh, fresh cut. Oh my gosh, it's always been that way. So. And they're like perfectly crisp. Right. Oh my gosh, okay. 700 pounds a day of potatoes. <laughs> That's just wild. I know. Yeah, it's a lot of potatoes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us. We uh, feel very excited to be here, and it was amazing being behind the grill. It's iconic here. Yes, it's yes. fun to watch. It is. And I was shocked at how many people were here at like 10 a.m. For a burger and fries, like that's how you do something right. At nine thirty, right. at nine thirty, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we used to open at eight o'clock in the morning, and there was one particular fellow, and I don't know exactly where he worked, but it was around here, and 
Tony always came in for 12 cheeseburgers for his girls. Oh, that's oh, funny. Yeah. Oh, shit, 8 a.m. Yeah. I could have a burger for breakfast. Yeah. Good protein. Yeah. Yeah. That'll keep you full for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Dairy. Yeah. Vegetables. Yeah. Oh, the full food pyramid, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and everything's fresh. I mean, we don't use frozen patties. It's always fresh beef patties. And they're all 100% beef. Um, yeah. 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 Our products great. are really good. And what's awesome. your favorite shake flavor? Or like what's the most popular? Black raspberry is my favorite. Salted caramel seems like that's what everybody's oh, favorite. Yeah. Or yeah. chocolate. chocolate. Sa- salted caramel would be so good oh, with fries. So good. Yeah. Just dunk yeah. some fries oh, yeah, in there. Right. Oh you're yeah. Right. Look at that. You're do it. <laughs> that, yep. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, thank Perfect. you so much for having us. Oh, thank, thank you wonderful. for doing this. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, we're gonna get into this this shake. We're gonna get into the whammies, surprise. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we will see you next at Zona Blanca. Oh the man. cheers. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Make chocolate's better. Oh that's so good. It's so caramely. Okay, is this for the fries oh, or the fries. burger? Uh fries. Okay. Tartar? Did she teach you how to make it? No. She's not going to share her recipe. They go through like 2,500 of those a day. Are you kidding? Are they open late? Yeah. Yeah. Probably their most popular time. 700 pounds of potatoes every single day. That tartar is so good. Yeah, it is. Hey, Adam and Chandler, Hello. how are you? Good. Good to see you. Last we saw you, we were at TT's, I think, right? Yeah. Well, welcome to Zona Blanca. Yeah. Thanks for coming down. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I hear you want to make some ceviche. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Get on back here. Let's All right, show I'll Adam wait. how it's done, okay? Yeah. Let's show okay. a real chef how he does it. <laughs> All right. What are we making? All right. So we're going to make a ceviche mixto. This is the most popular ceviche that we serve here at Zona Blanca. And mixto means mixed, right? So we have multiple proteins that are going in this in the ceviche. So yellowfin tuna, Spanish so octopus good. that is fully cooked, um, and then shrimp that is cured in lime juice. So that's like a natural like ceviche style. Um, so some of that is safe for a pregnant belly. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, uh, good to know. The raw tuna. Not so much. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to, like maybe eat one piece. Okay, perfect. Right, I mean, so, how could you not, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, first we start with a bowl, um, and then we're gonna add our three proteins in. So we have our yellowfin tuna. Okay. So go ahead and use that spoon and just spoon scoop bowl. in. Oops. Let's go two spoonfuls. All right. Oh no, no worries. rookie mistake. That's all right. <laughs> we're gonna get a few cucumbers. All right. Awesome. Okay. And then same thing with the octopus, which is right here. Okay. So our octopus. Um, we actually have come in frozen and for a very specific reason think of erosion, right? Water runs through the tentacles of the octopus and when you freeze it uh, The water expands and it actually breaks up the tissue inside of the octopus. So when oh. we braise it, it's naturally tender oh, uh, Very interesting. Then we have some shrimp here. Okay, so you're gonna scoop that out try to leave the liquid inside <laughs> Two. All right, let's do more, just a couple more, more pieces there you go. Awesome. Then we're going to go cucumber. Okay. Get that mess out of there for you. <laughs> there you oh my go. gosh, look at me. And then you could do, let's go like three scoops. Okay. It's nice that you kind of have everything prepped. So once people order, is it a pretty quick process? It typically? is. Our yeah. ceviche is typically our fastest thing mm-hmm. uh, that we make. So then we're going to add a little bit of cilantro. Just yep. Go ahead okay. and grab. Perfect. Some of us like more cilantro. Yeah, so I go like ahead. a little bit more. And then just a little bit of serrano chilies. Perfect. And then we're gonna use, some of us like it hot, uh, and then we're gonna use the agua chile rojo. Okay. And so just give that some a good dressing. Don't oh, be afraid. Oh, 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 oh. We wanna Stay see with. the sauce keep going. Okay. Keep going. Oh, now we know good. the secret. Okay. There you go. More sauce, <laughs> all right? And then you're just gonna use the spoon and mix that up. Okay. Oh, baby. 
Look at that. And okay, give me like a brief rundown of what's in your sauce without yeah. giving away your secrets. So wahio chilies, um, we have lime juice, we have uh, chamoy, which is like a salt fermented plum sauce, typically used in a lot of like frutas, snack bars, um, sometimes micheladas, um, a lot of street snacks. Um, and then, you know, salt, cilantro, and just keeping it very simple. Yeah. That's what you do at a lot of your restaurants. It's simple, but then you can taste the ingredients and like you just get the really good food. Exactly. You're not trying to cover anything up. No. Yeah. Um, often, I think a lot of restaurants or chefs for that matter put too much in and they don't oh, yeah. really like take a look at the ingredients and let them shine on their own. Right. Um, but when you come here, a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, these flavors are explosive. Yes. Sweet, salty, spicy, sour. And so achieving all of that while staying kind of balanced and controlled, yeah. sometimes the hardest trick. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Don't you call that umami? It is. Yeah, absolutely. you taught me that word yeah. many years ago, but okay. <laughs> awesome. So then you're just going to scoop some of that right in here. All right. And this serving's for me, so we're going to scoop a lot of it. <laughs> Does that look good? That's perfect. Okay. All right. So then we're going to add a little bit more sauce. We're just going to, yeah. we want to see it kind of puddle up underneath. Perfect. All right. And then we're going to add a little bit of pickled red onion. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just sprinkle it all over on top. There you go. Yeah, hide those in there. That those was are my perfect. fault. And then we have our salsa de cacahuates. And <laughs> people are like, salsa de cacahuate? Uh, <laughs> cacahuate is uh, Spanish for peanuts. Oh. And so we take uh, chilies, um, garlic, a little bit of fish sauce and oil and we blend that together and so you'll just kind of mix Beautiful. that up pretty good okay and don't get that on your clothes it does not come out or in your eyes or, or in your <laughs> eyes and then you're just going to drizzle some of that right on top okay and this adds just a little bit more flavor and some heat yep and it adds a little bit a little bit more of that umami and nuttiness for contrast Is that that's good? it Okay, bada wow, bing, bada boom. look at that. And then we pair it with your- Tostadas. Uh-huh. So, I'll bring this over here. Yes. Mayo. I'm just gonna take this whole thing home. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, we put a little bit of mayo because lean fish needs fat. And, pardon my reach. Sorry. Lean fish needs fat, um, but it also acts as a barrier on the tostada from the acid. So acid, oh. lime juice, uh -huh. or vinegar for that matter, <laughs> will slowly start to make your tostadas go soggy. And we don't want that, right? We want the food to stay crunchy and have all these great textures. And sometimes we get lost in conversation. We forget our food is on the tostada and it goes soggy. And we want to prevent that from happening. So we're thinking ahead and we smear the mayo on top of the tostada and then we add the ceviche on top of the tostada. And then we take a bite and it stays bite. crunchy. Oh, yes. Yeah. So then we just- Fabulous. Do you guys make these in house? We do, yeah. So we bake those. Uh, Look daily. at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's let's show the people how it's done. All right. Break off a piece, get some mayo, and just scoop it. Go for it. Absolutely. Okay. The perfect bite right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I could eat this every day. So good. And this is how they eat Watch it the real pro. on the streets mm -hmm. in Mexico, because you're typically on the street having this food at a ceviche cart. And um, to keep it from hitting your feet, you bring the plate up to your cheek. Okay. Wow. Well done. This food is so Fantastic. good. Fantastic. I could eat here every day. I like the little bit of uh, spice in here. In that. Is that a cricket right The there? cricket I think it's garnish. A cricket. Do it. Do it. Oh, here it Let's is. Let's each right here. do one. All right. Okay. It's right there. Big cricket, cricket right here. Adds, I'm, what, I'm why going, do they do it? Adds flavor? Salt? It has like a little bit of toastiness to it. Toastiness. And crunch. That's your word of the day. It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cricket crunch. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's good. The it guac is always good here. It doesn't really... Yeah, it doesn't really crunch. have much flavor. Yeah, yeah it's just crunch. Yeah, yeah. Protein? Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, Join us after the commercial break. For more Crave TV, we're heading to Barrister Winery. Hi, Craig. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Well, good to 
Good to see you. You too. Greg, nice to see you. Welcome to the Barrister. <laughs> Thank you. Thought maybe you could start the day off with a little bit of red wine. Thank you so much. <laughs> Why not? Can yes. you get a little tour? Sure. All right. This is what we call the gallery. This is, um, we, we change the art out in here each month. Okay. Uh, this month it's the Spokane Photography Club. What did this oh, used to be that. a long time ago? Oh, a long time ago, it was a it was a warehouse. Prior to 1949, they used to offload automobiles on the track on the tracks up there. Okay. Bring them across the bridge on the second floor, bring them down to the main floor, and clean them up for the car dealerships. Oh, very so, cool. Is, yeah, you can tell the age of the building. I mean, the, oh. the great floors oh, here. I mean, beautiful. everything I love that here. you kept it. Yeah, and the brick. Yeah. And all that. I think yeah. it's, it's so beautiful in here. Yeah, the building's from 1908, um, okay. and we're just so fortunate to have found this. Really. Yeah. Lucky we have these old historic buildings in downtown. Oh yeah, yeah. and you all have been here since 2004? Yes, Okay. Mm -hmm. and we've been in wineries since 2001 and we moved here in 2004. So, so tell us a little about First Fridays. Well, First Friday, we change the art out in here each month. So right now, right now we're booked through 2023. Um, not a bad on, issue. No, not a, yeah. not a bad problem at all. Artists in town. Pre-COVID, yeah, we, it's all local artists. Um, Pre-COVID on first Friday, we would have seating in here for 200 and it would be standing room only. Wow. It's kind of become a destination. Now on, on Wednesdays and Friday nights, we have music. Um, this week we'll have the Northwest Bach Fest. So we a lot of things to bring the community together. In here. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we got here and your piano was being tuned up perfectly. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll have to play nice a song in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go check out the winemaking process. So this is our production area. Okay. We do everything here except grow the grapes. This year we'll probably fresh about 110 tons of grapes. Okay. And we buy from 10 different vineyards from Walla Walla and across the Vantage. So today we're getting the blending done. So and so why do you blend them all together? Because we want each bottle of Merlot to taste the same. Okay, that makes we sense. We don't want the difference between each barrel. So they're all blended together. And, and how did you start the winery? Oh, by accident. Oh, really? um, in uh, 97, Seven. Michael and his wife and their daughter, and my son and I were going up to Ainsworth Hot Springs. Got on the road and realized nobody had brought anything to drink. It did not look well. Problem. So we're driving through Nelson, and the store says wine shop. So we pull in, and they don't sell bottles of wine. They sold wine making kits. And we said, we always want to make wine. <laughs> so we bought this kit to make five gallons of Zinfandel from a concentrate. Uh -huh. And that's how this whole thing started. Wow. 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 You just great. discovered a passion and a love for it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's all done right here. That's fantastic. Everything's done here. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, do you like to go downstairs? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. This is the coolest elevator I've seen in town. It is a pretty cool elevator. Thank you. Be careful of your stuff there. Thank you. Welcome to the barrel room. Wow. So this Very is, cool. This is where our red wines come and age anywhere from a year and a half to five years. It was amazing down here. Doesn't it? Yeah. 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 How many barrels would you say? Well, by the time we're through with harvest this year, we'll have 500 barrels down here. Okay. And each barrel has 300 bottles of wine in it. And why this space? Like, why? what makes it unique? Oh, it's it, we don't have to temperature control it at all. Mm -hmm. So the wine has to stay at That's a certain cool. temperature mm -hmm. to, to age properly. And this is just perfect for it because okay. we're underground. Uh, and additionally, this space is perfect because of the trains. Oh, okay. So all of our, every time a train goes by, these barrels are gently vibrated. So, oh my God. so it settles the sediment a little it's bit? It helps settle out the sediment, sediment wow. and helps soften the wine a little bit. Wow, so that's very 25, cool. we get 25,000 trains a year overhead here. So, so after it's been down here for a couple of years, it oh, yeah. really gets a... Yeah, so um, by the time we release a Merlot, it's been gently shaken. Not stirred about seventy thousand times. Wow! wow. So it's and like doing your work for you. Oh you yes, just... we had absolutely no idea when we moved here. So uh -huh. It's it just, meant to be. Yes. Just part special. of what makes it special and mm -hmm. it really makes is. it unique to Spokane. It really yeah. is. It yeah. really is special. Yeah. We just come down here and sometimes pinch ourselves. So, so what? What's the? What is the name behind the name? Barrister. Barrister. In our past life, Michael and I were both attorneys. Okay. And the. Under the British and Canadian legal systems, they have barristers and solicitors. Okay. So, okay. In fact, that's our our logo is the scales. So of rough justice. justice. Yeah. yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That's okay. Logo is the scales of justice with great clusters and yeah. yeah the rough, Interesting. That's where the rough justice came from. So I thought we'd try uh, taste a little wine out of barrel. Today, okay. That's cool. Okay. Let's do it. This is Merlot that has been aging in a French oak barrel for the last two years. Okay. 
and I'm going to give you in your other glass the exact same wine that has been aging in an American oak barrel. Smell that. Yeah, smell the last yeah. few years. Mm, it seems it's almost buttery. Pressure's on. Okay. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot different. Oh. Yeah, so it, I think it does have like a little bit more of that buttery sort of oak age mm -hmm. to that. Or so oak, which one is the American? This one. That one, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna pour a little bit of American in with the French. Ooh. Okay. Because that's what we're gonna do at the end of the day. We're gonna blend these. Oh yeah, that together. makes it completely different. Yes. Oh wow. So you get kind of three different wines out mm -hmm. of these. Yes. Yeah, it really balances. Yeah, and it, I mean, lovely. and you really get like that barrel aroma, like you're getting yeah. from when you step down here. Oh, yes. It's like yeah. very similar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that's the same idea, right? So the aromatics are all blending together when you have all yes. these barrels and mm -hmm. the age of everything. I think that makes sense. So. Oh, it makes a huge difference. So thank you so much for the tour. That was really great. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful to have this opportunity. And the wine club has kind of been special for us. We okay. started it 10 years ago, hoping we'd get 50 people and build it up to about 175. Uh -huh. We just broke up over 2,000 members. So Holy it's, cow. It's been, it's, that is it's a kept lot. us apart. It kept us alive during COVID. Well, and I think that's, I said something about Spokane, about supporting its own people, really you know, and, and some people that are doing some great things here. And I think that's, I mean, that's really what we're here to showcase is we want to show that Thank off you. a little bit. So your wine club, people subscribe and every month they come in and get. No, it's just twice a year. Oh, just twice a year. Twice a year, they get three bottles. Okay. Two are pre-release. You get them about two months before the public does. And then one is a wine club only one. It's made exclusively so it's for the wine club. Very special. Very exclusive. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are you still taking new members? Oh yes. Okay. Okay. Members. Thank you for all the work you do. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, good. thank you so much. It's been wonderful. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thanks for having us. We'll be back. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Crave TV. Join us weekends for more.